Hey, what's up guys? It's Jake at KA Tag, and today we're back at it again with a very fast cycling snowball mortar bait deck. We have a very fast cycle with the Spear Goblins, the Skeleton Barrel, the Bats, and the Goblin Gang. So all these cards are two or three elixir, and you don't even have a big spell just to cycle so much faster. I love this deck because it incorporates the Snowball, which is one of the most underrated spells in the game, and it also has Minion Horde, which is an underappreciated card as well. Typically, you end up seeing Rascals or Prince, but in this deck, you're gonna see the Minion Horde, so I really like that. Check out this deck for 12 win grand challenges or hit it up on the ladder it's very free to play friendly with only one legendary and let me know how it ends up working for you down below in the comment section we're gonna go to spear goblins at the river we're gonna see if we can accomplish anything here getting some chip damage early on is always nice so he's gonna end up going in for that juicy bar barrel so you know what i want to do i'm gonna go for the minion ward see if we can bait out a big spell whether it's a fireball oh no if i had mired in front maybe the baby dragon would have retargeted on that but the baby dragon's still not going to provide a massive amount of value it dies to the minion ward four for four trade we'll take that I'm gonna go bats here. Okay, very well played with the fly machine at the river. I guess he knew. I guess he knew what our tactic was, boys. Ah, I believed in myself, but it didn't happen. Spear Goblins will end up coming through and killing the fly machine, so that's good. And he also ends up going for Tombstone. That's a huge negative elixir trade for him. Tombstone's out of cycle. I feel comfortable going in for a mortar here. We know that he's gonna end up having the Love Hound deck, right? With Lumberjack and Flying Machine. He doesn't have Miner. He's gonna go Bar Barrel here, and I can definitely go Minion Horde right on top. Get that connection. Even apply more aggression here. Yeah, that barb should just die. Wow, that is phenomenal for us. The mortar goes on top. We bait out a poison. We bait out a bar barrel. That's already six elixir. Then he ends up going in for a mega minion. Oh my gosh, man. That's a nine elixir investment just to kill a mortar and minion horde. Nine for nine and we get all that tower damage. That's what I'm talking about. Positive value. Not positive elixir trade because it's like, you know, it's even. But for all that damage, we're going to call it a positive elixir trade. Okay, OJ? We're restructuring the framework of positive elixir trades. <laughs> positive value trade. That's what we call it, guys. I'm going to go Goblin Gang here because it's pretty obvious that he's going to go in for some type of uh, Bar Barrel Predict. He needed to make something happen. I'm just going to let the Baby Dragon connect and then I'm going to go in for a Minion Horde here. And we should be able to deny just about everything. I mean, you're going to get a lot of tower damage on me. I just didn't want to lose my tower. Let's be real here. Losing the tower is really bad. Keeping the tower alive, it's its a little bit better, guys. Not going to lie. <laughs> so I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to go gamble everything and be like, yo, I'm totally going to defend this. Because that would just be a bad decision. I'm going to go in for minor plus bats. He's probably going to have to go in for a baby dragon on this. And that would be horrible because then he can't support the Lava Hound. And then he just loses both towers. That's what I love to see. If we're being honest out here, that's what I really want to see. I'm also going to go for a mortar here. And then go in for Spear Goblins, wait for the Baby Dragon to lock, and then I go in and uh, just Ravage it. Yeah, this is GG. I played pretty much perfectly. I wouldn't have changed too much in this matchup at all. And I uh, I don't know. I don't think I made a single misplay. So I'm very, very happy with how this one uh, transpired. Just showcases if you keep up the aggression against Lava Hound decks, even if it's Lava Loon. It wasn't Lava Loon, but this is probably one of the harder uh, Lava Hound decks to play against. And we should be able to walk away with a W. A little bit of a lag spike there, but I don't think it's going to matter. Not during a crucial defense. Doesn't matter, man. We're just going to collect the W. Move on to the next game. Sauce out of GG. Well played. And peace out, Girl Scout. It was a pleasure playing against you, brother. Got him, Chief. We got him. We're going to go Spear Goblins at the river. This guy's going to go for a gang gang. We're going to go gang gang on defense here. And he's going to go for a minor right into us. So hopefully he doesn't have Zap or Snowball. He does have Zap. So that's not what I wanted to see, unfortunately. I'm going to go in for a minor push. I hope that one of the bats will stay alive. That Barry... Barry is still alive. Let's get some value with Barry. We're going to get one hit, hopefully. No. No. Zero hits with Barry. Barry, you're a complete failure. My disappointment is immeasurable here. I'm going to go in for a minion horde here. And I want to go in for spear goblins. I don't want that to hit my tower. It looks like it's going to hit my tower whether I like it or not. And I probably have to go in for a giant snowball to mitigate damage from that. If you guys didn't know, if you time your giant snowball just correctly... You will not sustain any damage from that Dark Goblin, as shown. So hopefully we can win this game. Yeah, Zap and Dark Goblin. I don't really like seeing that. But, you know, gotta give what you're... Gotta deal with what you have, guys. Gotta deal with what you have. This is one of the situations that... He's probably gonna zap that. I'm gonna be super sad. Oh, never mind. He didn't zap the thing I was scared about. If he zapped the bats, we were so screwed, man. It was really scary. So when they have zap, you're in a pretty bad situation with this deck. It's kind of based off of the premise of people running only uh, Bar Barrel, which is one of the most overpowered cards in the game right now. So it's really interesting to see that. We go Spear Goblins just so then the Mega Knight goes towards that. Spear Goblins actually will get some value on top of the uh, Dark Goblin as well. 
And I can eat the damage on the left-hand side. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be like one hit. That was two. All right. So, kind of want to go for a Mortar early, so then he's not going to have enough Elixir for Mega Knight. Just want to keep applying aggression, so then he just doesn't have, like... He, I mean, he has the correct cards in Cycle, just doesn't have, like, the Elixir for it. So then he's spending inefficient defenses. Also, him zapping there is phenomenal for us. Now we can go for Bats, and then we can go for Miner. So if I just waited until I'm at 10 Elixir, I 100% lose this matchup. Like, there's no way for me to win then. But he doesn't have Zap and Cycle. We're going to be going in for a Giant Snowball, just making sure that... His bats end up dying, so then our bats get even more value on the Mega Knight, slowing everything down as well. Phenomenal stuff for us. I'm going to go Mortar here. I'm going to go Goblin Gang. I just want to end up hitting the uh, Dark Goblin. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but we are going to be able to draw the Mega Knight to walk towards our, our uh, Mortar, which is really incredibly important for us. We go Goblin Gang with this as well. I don't think he's going to Mega Knight because then he wouldn't be able to hit the Skeletons immediately. He did it anyway. I think the Skeletons should be able to take him out here then. I'm going to go for Spear Goblins. He's probably going to zap this, I would assume. But we're going to be fine here. All I need to do is go in for one more Miner. I can eat some damage, and then I can go Goblin Gang on defense. He's going to zap that, and then I have to go for Bats immediately right after. Miner needs one more hit. Got him. Kind of a bad matchup, especially because he has Zap, but we take the W. Feels good, man. GG, well played, and peace out. No, we got one of the better players in the game. Hopefully, he's not running Golem. We'll have to wait and see. We're going to be saucing out of good luck here. I'm going to go for Spear Goblins at the river. If he's running Golem, this could be a sad panda moment for us. <laughs> I want to go in for a Mortar here. See if he is. See what he's running. See what he's packing. So, he's going to end up going for a Lumberjack. We should be able to kill that with a Goblin Gang. He does not have a good card cycle if he's running Golem, which is looking like Golem. All right. So, he's going to go Bar Barrel as well. So when I see Bar Barrel, what I want to do is I want to go for a Skeleton Barrel, bait out a Baby Dragon or something. Then I want to go opposite with a Miner and baby and uh, Bats, but it's not looking like that's happening. I'm going to do it anyway. I just don't want him to get down a Golem push on us, and it looks like he's going straight for the Golem. He's going straight for the Gold. He might be doing a Tower Trade here. Go for a Mortar. Try to pull that opposite. Guys, this is going to be hard. He's probably going to go Baby D, so I'm going to have to wait for that to lock, and then I want to go in for... A minion horde. If he goes in for a prediction NATO, I'm so screwed then. I hope he doesn't. I hope he's not that wild. Minion horde should be able to clean up everything without getting three crowned. I was not trying to defend that tower, by the way. I was trying to make sure I wasn't getting three crowned. Because if you try to get a defense off against a golem, you better have a lot more elixir than that. Minion horde is so amazing against golem. If he doesn't pre NATO, then he definitely is in a huge predicament. So I'm going to go for spear goblins here. By the way, he is. By no means out of this game already. This is uh, a really, really phenomenal start for me, but he could definitely come back, which is the scariest thing. Sauna Dude is one of the best golem players in the world, and uh, yeah, he knows to come back in bad situations for him. Really good card cycle for me, so maybe we can still abuse this. It looks like he's just going to sack the tower. Yeah, he knew. Dude, a lesser golem player would have tried to defend that, wasted elixir, and now I'm in a situation where how do I defend against him? He can drop things right on top of the mortar. I guess I have to sack, like, or cycle a few mortars here. I'm going to go cycle a skeleton barrel first, so then when the baby dragon locks, we're going to be able to deal with that. I'm going to try to kill the baby dragon. I don't know. I want to go for a, a miner, so then the baby dragon locks onto that. And this is looking a little bit scary, to say the least, guys. I'm going to go for spear gobs, and I want to go bats. Unfortunately, I think that the three crown might be a little bit scary. Oh, man, I might just lose this. Yeah, dude. He's just, he's so good at Golem. He's able to make comebacks that are just unreal. I'm not exactly sure how he's supposed to defend that one if he uh, orchestrates the offense properly and he just made sure not to ever waste any elixir. The thing about Sonic Dude is he never wastes elixir defending. He just dropped all of his elixir on offense, orchestrated a really fearsome push, and I wasn't able to defend it. So exceptionally well played by Sonic Dude. He's going to have Barbell, but he's probably not Barbell, right? So we should get a lot of value with the bats in this matchup. We'll see what he does, but I'm kind of banking on that. Definitely want to go in for a Miner before we approach 10. And I don't want to go in for a Mortar because I don't want to overextend and not have an answer to his Bridge Bam. A little bit scared about that, so I actually want to go Mortar on defense here. Spear Goblins here. That Skeleton is just completely enveloping that. Whew, we got value there for sure. I'm going to go Bats. And then as we said, look, he just doesn't have anything for the bats. He's literally going bar barrel right into the bats. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. I think we got him, guys. This is great. Just showcases the uh, the ability of bats in a matchup where they do not have zap. 
So usually that's what you have happen when they have bats. When you got bats and they don't end up having any answer, you can successfully depend on them just getting 100% of value. 100% Canadian, 100% value out of those bats and more. It's like 200% value. I'm going to go for more because we're definitely up Elixir and that will lock on the tower and get even more hits. I can successfully assume that that's going to be okay. He's going to go in for a ram just to connect and finish off the mortar and now I can go spear goblins. I'm not going to try to defend that because if it connects then the battle ram's dead, you know? Don't have to deal with it anymore. I can go for a minor here, just keeping up the aggression, making sure that he's never able to get an insurmountable elixir advantage because if that happens, then we're in a bad situation. That's what his deck functions off of, getting an elixir advantage. Because then his decks, then his cards are pretty cohesive. But if he has like very little elixir and he constantly has to scramble for defense against the mortar, that's generally how we're going to win, especially when he doesn't have like suitable counters for the uh, for the bait proponents that we have. Like he doesn't have an answer to the bats. If he goes in for an electro like that, we go in for a minion horde. He hasn't even seen that yet. He doesn't even know the surprise, man. Surprise, we got the horde. And then we get skeletons. Dude, he just burst open the pinata of skeletons. We're really making magic happen. I'm going to end up going for Spear Goblins, and then I'm also going to go for Bats. He went in for Zap. Oh, he actually has Zap, right? Does he actually have Zap and Electro? That's crazy, man. I wasn't expecting that at all. So this is a little bit harder for us than uh, I expected, but we did win. If he has Zap, he definitely has favorable matchup here. I'm going to go for Bats as well, and I think we can just assert dominance with the three crown. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you, brother. Crazy game.